Well then, boys and girls, I can tell by scrolling through Facebook and Instagram and all those different platforms that we're all in our tackle sheds at the minute, prepping for when hopefully we can get back out on the bank. So I'm no different to you guys. I'm itching to get back out, but there's jobs that can be done in the meantime. I'm in the uh, tackle shed and I've actually got my pole rigs out and I'm retying nearly all of my rigs in preparation for obviously some warmer weather and some bagging sessions when we can uh, get out on the bank again. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to tie you a rig up. I've got a couple of, of extra rigs that I want to tie up, but also I want to talk to you about the pole floats I use. It's not a product plug, you know, no means at all. The reason I want to talk to you about the pole floats that I use is when we go out coaching, either when I go out with Lee Kerry, when we do our group days, or when I go individually coaching, the most embarrassing aspect of the day for all of the anglers is when they open their box and they all, to a man, cringe at their pole floats. And they know themselves that they're not quite right because there's such a range of pole floats in there and the anglers just don't know what to do with them. They don't know why they use a particular float for each purpose and it just it blows my mind, let alone those anglers' minds. So I just want to talk to you about how simple you know, pole float choice should be really. So anyone that knows any of my articles or videos in the past you'll know that I like to keep to one sort of like set body type and that is an elongated rugby ball sort of like slim pattern. Now for commercial fishery work you can't really go wrong with that side, side of flow. It offers a bit of both You've got a bit of body there to hold on to any slight toe. Let's get it right. There's not much toe on commercial fisheries, really. But you've got a bit of body there to hold on to that toe. But it's also slim enough to not hinder striking or any resistance to a taking fish. So I think it's a brilliant, happy medium. I also have just really got on with that style of body. So I just think incorporate that in nearly all of my pole floats. So all my deep water fishing revolves around that body shape. Now, what I like to do is just tailor the tip material for each individual situation. So I have two ranges of floats. The first is my summer float, which is a Malman Rube. It's got a nice thick bristle, that's a two mil bristle, hollow bristle, a nice bit of buoyancy. And that's the float I use for sort of like six mil pellets, corn, meat, you know, standard commercial fishery work during the summer months. I'll tie those up on 018, because I know that I'm gonna be bagging hopefully with those floats. Then, I've got some Malman Dusties tied up, and you can see same shape body, but a thinner bristle. This one's got a 1.5 millimeter bristle, which I think is ideal for sort of expander pellets, maggots, casters, those smaller baits, maybe F1 fishing, that sort of thing. And the only difference between really this float and the Rube is that the Rube's got a standard steel wire stem, and the Dusty has got a titanium wire stem. The reason for that is, with the Dusty, I might just fancy flirting a bit of bait through the water, sort of like, and trying to fish with this, maybe in the bottom third of the swim. And that titanium wire just doesn't sink quite as quick and just doesn't register quite as quick as the steel wire. So it just helps me fish through the water a little tiny bit better. The steel wire is great because obviously, you've got a thick bristle there, there's quite a bit of resistance to a fish, but, when a fish takes the bait, without getting too scientific, the extra weight of that steel stem creates a bit of inertia and it dips the float under a lot faster. So a little bit less resistance on a taking fish there because of that stem. As I say, they're my deep water floats and I like to keep everything really simple with that sort of pattern, that elongated rugby ball pattern of float. But that doesn't mean, obviously, I haven't got other floats in, the, in my box. So I've got some old Mick Wilkinson cookies. They're probably antiques by now. Beautiful float for dobbing carp or fishing for proper carp with bigger baits, sort of six mil and eight mil pellets in the summer. Really good shallow float. Then I've got, you know, a, a couple of jiggers in there, some little tiny jiggers that I'm sure those little polyball jiggers will interest a few people. I'll maybe talk about those in a, on a future video. And, and then even for my really sort of like caster shallow floats, really slim, Pattern still, 3 by 8 Chianti there, you know, classic float, really light float. Now, the floats that I'm missing at the minute are some floats for fishing up against the far bank, you know, tapping in bait, fishing against the far bank in really shallow water, and that's what I'm going to tie up for you now. So, I've got 
some lovely little floats. Used these last year, superb little floats. Now, the reason I like these is because I'm going to bulk all of my weight with this rig, probably about four inch away from the hook. That keeps the bait nice and still. Hopefully there's going to be a mountain of fish in my swim when I'm fishing with these floats. So all that fin movement is going to displace the rig and it's going to cause problems if, if I'm not careful. So I want a really stable rig in amongst all those fish. They've got a fiberglass stem for strength. Fiberglass is still quite a stable material. And importantly, the side eye is actually whipped in. Now, I'm a big fan of side eyes. And I really can't get on with those spring side eyes around the base of a bristle. I think your line comes off at a really awkward angle. So these side eyes, they're a proper side eye, actually in the body of the float, but for strength, they actually come whipped in. You know, there's a little bit of whipping around the round the eye, round the bristle, and that obviously has some strength while I can still fish the float and get a real nice presentation with it. Now you might say, well that's not the elongated body that you keep talking about, Rob. Obviously when we're talking about putting a lot of weight on a rig and fishing in shallow water, we want quite a stumpy float. I don't really want a really long float in shallow water. So you obviously have to squash the body a little bit. So we just made that body a little bit stubbier for the purposes of obviously what we're going to do with them. Now, making a rig, it can it can be so easy, but it's also so complicated. I've seen people get this totally wrong. But I take my spool of line. These rigs are going to be made up on 014. Thread the line through the side eye. Now I've got two bits of silicon. Sometimes you'll go in a shop or you'll buy some floats. Sometimes you know I get floats in trade packs. And the silicon that actually comes with the float is horrendous. That silicon that comes with the floats, you might as well just chuck it in the bin. What you'd like, to, what's, what you ought to do is go to the go to the tackle shop and find some really nice soft silicon. You don't want the hard stuff. You want really nice soft silicon. And what I've done for this float, I'm only using two rubbers, but for all of my other floats, anything that's got a stem over maybe three inch long, I use three rubbers. Top, middle, and obviously bottom of the stem but for this float as I say two rubbers I've got one rubber that sits just under the base of the body I'll just thread this other one on that rubber that's just under the base of the body is probably about four or five mil and this one that sits on the base of the stem will be double that and the reason being is you just want that to overlap the stem and what that'll do is it'll just it'll stop no end of tangles because that bit of silicon just overlapping creates a little bit of stiffness there and it just keeps the line away from wrapping over the pole bristle. So, you know, that's threaded on. Now we need to put some shot on it. Now I like to use slot shot for all of my commercial fishery work. And because I know roughly what these floats take, because so I've used them in the past. That's another benefit of using the same, the same floats, keeping your fishing nice and simple. I can just put the shot on. I'm using my teeth, I know. My dentist doesn't particularly like that, but that's all right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put to put because we're looking to bulk this rig and get it as stable as possible I'm gonna put four so I think this float could take the shot I'm gonna put four number eights on and then what we need to do I've seen people use all sorts of things pasta jars cut down lemonade jars you just want to test the float fill up a little a nice deep long jar some water if you've got a world pairs a bit of crystal hanging around you could use that and what we're looking to do is obviously get the float to sit really just about how we're going to fish with it now once again I see too many people with too much float bristle sticking out the reason I like to use thick bristles I think that'll take probably another number nine the reason I like to use thick bristles 
is so I can dot them down and still see the bristle at a long distance. And that dotted down bristle just offers loads less resistance on a taking fish. But what I want to do is just shot the float, there you go. That to me is perfect. It's a perfect starting point because when you get to a lake, you'll be surprised, every lake's a little bit different. That's shotted halfway up the bristle. And then when I'm on the bank, what I'll do is maybe add number 12 or number 13 even just above that bulk to just trim it to it so it's perfect. On some venues, it might actually sit perfect when I get my hook on and my bait and all those all those extra little bits of weight. But as a starting point, halfway the bristle is a perfect way to go. Right, so we've done all our work in the bottom sort of like six or eight inches of this line. So what I'm going to do is pull all of the Slot shot, hook the rig. It's actually taken a lot of weight this float has for the size of his body. So it's all in a little ball. And with a little loop tire, I'm going to tie a loop, single overhand loop. And I just use a loop tire because I feel that just a little bit stronger than doing it by hand. And you get a lovely little, little loop when you do that. Again, use my teeth, not really, not really too bothered by that when I'm doing a rough, rough cut. Now with this rig, although I only expect to fish maybe a foot of water with this rig, I'm still going to peel off maybe six foot of line. That's for good reason. One, I don't want to get to the bank and I've not got enough line on the rig. And two, who knows? what situation I'm going to be faced with. I might be faced with really clear water with some really spooky fish where I need to keep the line away from the fish. Or I might even use the rig as a swinging rig. You know, if I'm just short of an island, I want to swing a rig over to the far bank. it would be a perfect rig to use for that. So always make sure I've got enough line above the float to mess around with on the bank. Pull that shot down. And here's something else that's Seems simple to a lot of people, but it's, you know, can still confuse people. I still see people, you know, probably get five, five, six guys a year that do this the wrong way. Your hook length loop goes on the winder first, on the little peg first. And just pull the float up and then really loosely, but still under some tension so it doesn't all fall off, wrap the line on. Last thing you want to do is wrap the line on really tight and it comes off in a zigzag when you do actually want to use the rig. Put it on a little hand cut and we're sorted. So there you go. Making a pole rig, pole float choices, you know, it's really simple. If you've guys got loads of time on your hands, which as I say, I think we all have at the minute, get in the fishing shed, get your rigs out, simplify your floats and get prepared when we can get back out on the bank again.